Aaron Davis was a playoff winner at the City Ground. He'll tell you about that remarkable match against Yeovil. His move to Nottingham Forest, his career at the City Ground as well, his departure and what he's up to these days. Aaron Davis, next. This video is brought to you in association with my good friends at Trent Bridge. Aaron, great to see you again. Um, we should probably start with your Forest career, actually before your Forest career, because perhaps you're most famous for a game at the City Ground when you were playing for, for Yeovil and that crazy playoff semi-final. Um, talk to me about that and, and what you remember of that, that particular evening. Yeah, that tends to be the the first thing that comes up with my forest career, pre forest career. But um, no, that was an amazing night for, for obviously me personally and um, Yeovil as well, and uh, especially for my family as well. My mum's passed now, so that video, you know, it, it comes along on uh, on Scott, Sky Sports every year with with the playoffs coming up. So it's actually nice you can see my mum in the crowd. So that game um, at the time was very important to me, but but even now, um, look, you know, when it does pop up, I get sent it. Uh, most most playoff uh, campaign, so it's uh, now it, it was special. It was a special night, um, a crazy night, and um, I knew there was interest in Forest before that game. Um, always loved playing at the City Ground, and and even after that game, you know, with what went on, um, we actually got clapped off the pitch, and I even remember like you know walking back to the tunnel and stuff, and it was you know Forest fans just showing their their class and. Uh, and uh, um, wishing us well type thing and clapping us off. There was a few that booed us rightfully so. It gets a bit <laughs> stick, but, um, you know, my, my my memory of that was obviously, look, we, we was buzzing at the time and individually I, you know, I had a decent game, but, um, you know, there was a lot of Forest fans that, um, you know, showed real class after the game and uh, and that that was part of my decision-making going forward. Even after the game, I think uh, Russell Slade knew uh, uh, Nottingham very well. We stopped in the Asda to get some... Uh, refreshments shall we say and uh yeah there was a few forest fans that even come up to us then and, and you know were very classy with uh with their words and stuff one of the questions i was going to ask was how much the move to forest had been sorted or talked about or or what before that that playoff semi-final yeah well i, I didn't know too much about it um obviously keith burt was the head of recruitment and when we actually signed myself and chris he said that he tried to sign us both in the january i, I didn't hear anything of that didn't have a clue um and it was more um i knew there were you know there was interest potentially before the semis and then uh, before the final my agent kind of rang me and said look forest would uh you know you'd like your services just go and concentrate on wembley and and, and see where it goes um, and then when it came down to it, you know, there was a few clubs over the summer. Uh, we was actually very close to to both going to, to Leicester, myself and Chris. Um, we both had different agents, but obviously we we were more or less best mates. So we're still speaking to each other by the hour. And um, you know what I go back to there is you know, when we played the semis at Forest. You know, I just had that feeling, although it's for another team. I, I just I just loved that city ground. It, it was outstanding. Every time we played there, I just I just loved it. Um, so that, that was in my mind, um, you know, in terms of, of, of choosing Forest. You mentioned Chris, and it was obviously a, a joint deal with, with Chris Cohen. Could you have gone your separate ways, or was it always going to be a, a joint deal? Did Yeovil kind of package you together, you know, not quite buy one, get one free, but <laughs> along those kind of lines, you, you had to go as a duo? Yeah, I, th I think it was, because Leicester was was the taking the both of us. Um, obviously, Forrest were the both of us, and, and we, we both had kind of individual kind of potential offers as well. Um, but, you know, we were good mates, and we were speaking, like, you know, daily, perhaps by the hour as it was going along. So, um, you, know, we was, you know, it had to be Forrest. We were convinced it's Forrest. Chris just made me sweat a little bit. I got up to Forest and he came up about five hours later. So um, <laughs> <laughs> he, he made us sweat a little bit. Like I said, we had, we had you know, different people representing us. And, um, you know, I come up with my dad on the day. So uh, he absolutely loved it as well. We met Colin. I think the lads flew out to, yeah, in fact, they did fly out to Austria. So Colin um, met us for breakfast at the Jury's Inn, uh, literally about half five in the morning. So, um, you know, my dad absolutely loved it. We were showed around the training ground, around the ground. Obviously, my dad's like a massive, massive football fan, knew the history of Forest and, you know, Keith and, and the staff behind the scenes were showing us around the, the trophy room and stuff. And my dad was, you know, he was literally pinching himself and and so was I. But I was a bit anxious to to sign the paperwork and, and get it done, uh, waiting for Chris to, to take his kind of time coming up the uh, the M1. But now when it got done, we was, we was absolutely, you know, delighted. 
we touched on Leicester. I wonder how close it was at that time for you to to go there. Did you get to have talks with them? Well, how I, close did it get? Yeah, you know, I, I didn't. Um, I was, I was, you know, obviously very young, and you know, I, I'm an agent now, but I, I didn't really know the conversations were going on. I was just getting, you know, calls off my agent saying this is happening, this is happening, and my bag packed. I was actually in my car going up to Leicester at one point. He said, "Just make your way up there, and we're lying out in the morning." Um, you know, and then later that night. Um, it was like you're going to forest. So, you know, to be honest, I wasn't involved in them conversations. I don't know what had happened on the business front, but um, you know, I was kind of, you know, when when it was the decision, decision, sorry, between Leicester or Forest, um, you know, it was Forest kind of all day long. And then it got to the point where meet Colin after um after the clubs had agreed the deal. And when I met Colin, you know, he's a he's a top, top man. And um, you know, that that rubber stamped it and uh, then the excitement started, you know what I mean? It's amazing, isn't it? Because particularly with what you do now as an agent, I think a lot of people, a lot of fans would think, you know, the player is the the person that, you know, decides. And obviously you have the final decision, but, you know, you would be instrumental on the way in terms of picking where you're going to go, which which is the next step in your career. But from what you're saying, it, it, it doesn't always go that way. You're kind of no. led one way or the other. Yeah, no, it wasn't the case. I, I didn't I didn't even ask a question on money. I didn't know what money I was signing, you know, until I got up here. Like, I just trusted my agent to do all that. You know, I wasn't really too fussed. Though. You know, I knew it was going to be more than what I was on at Yeovil, but it's more just the next step in my career. Um, and, and to be fair, the few days that it was going on, it was fairly, it was nice. as It, it was exciting. But then you get to the point, you like, I want to get this deal over the line. I don't want to know where I'm going. Because, um, you know, I didn't think I'd be going back into to Yeovil doing a pre-season we end up doing about three or four days I think and um and the lads were battering me and Chris John I mean we still had to put <laughs> the work in for pre-season but they knew we were we were off and um that Yeovil were great to be fair they kept us kind of in the loop with everything that was that was going on like club to club side but um you know in terms of me knowing personally having a massive input on it you know that wasn't the case and there was this thing wasn't there at the time about because Chris had a 30 percent um, sell-on clause to um, that Yeovil had to pay, didn't they, to to West Ham if he was if he was sold. So I think the deal was kind of structured so that he was the, yeah, the yeah, cheap, yeah. cheap so, part so, of the deal, wasn't it? So we both did, yeah. So um, I had, look, I don't know the exact percentages, but I had, I had a sell-on as well um, right. that went to Southampton, and Chris did to West Ham. So I think you know the fee was going to be the same. Um, and, and just worked out where we over got maximum money. Um, I think, like again, I wasn't wasn't overly involved. In, well, I wasn't involved in any conversations no. at all. It doesn't know. matter to you, really, that, does it? That was the case. Yeah, the package was the package, and, and you know, Forest were were willing to pay it, and uh, and I think Leicester were as well at one point. How close were you to Chris Cohen at at Yeovil? Because obviously, you came to Forest together, and I think everybody kind of understandably lumped you as as, as one, having come from. <laughs> Hewish part, but yeah. were, you, were you good friends at, at, at Yeovil? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we, we were top, top mates. I remember um, clearly the first day that Chris turned up for um, when he came on loan to Forest with his baggy suit and ended up sitting next to me on the bus and we ended up sharing a room. So, um, yeah, no, we were very close, um, uh, you know, on the pitch. Um, you know, we connected well. We, we, we buzzed off each other and... and um, you know, we, we when you live in Yeovil and we play for Yeovil, you become like there's not much to do down there without being disrespectful. You become very close. So there was me, um, Chris, Nathan Jones, Anthony Barry, um, Skiver. We had a, we had a good pool that you know we were very very close. But even when Chris signed his um, his permanent deal to come to to come to Yeovil, I was in a position renewing my contract, and you know I was making sure that he was signing before I committed to my contract as well. So we was in that position the year before signing our deals. So we were fairly used to it when it comes to the decision to uh, to move the forest. Having done the deal and and you know you both make the the journey to to the city ground, you have that nightmare start basically, don't you? Where you you get injured and oh, I'm guessing all you want to do is make your debut for your new club and get going and make a, an impact to begin with, and you you suffer that that injury which keeps you out for quite a while. Yeah, that was um, that that. Yeah, it was gutting to be honest. You know, I find find it hard to find the the words for it, but it was absolutely gutting because um, obviously the first day when we met all the Forest players, it was a bit edgy because of what we just done a few months before. But the lads after that were absolutely superb with us. Um, you know, when Colin said, you know, look after these lads, 
Um, it was absolutely suppose I absolutely loved preseason. Went out to Austria. That was superb comeback, and I felt like I was absolutely flying. There was a real kind of buzz from the lads, um, from the staff, and, and, and you know the fans as well. When I was, you know, ever going into West Bridgeville doing my shopping, there was a real kind of excitement, which you know I felt like gave me an extra two, two percent, three percent from from where I was at Yeovil, just, just alone on adrenaline. Um, and then to break my leg at mud, well, look, I was absolutely gutted. And um, first time I've ever been injured. I don't think I'd missed more than like a day's training my whole like whole career. So it was that um, was in pre season, wasn't it? Yeah, it was the last. It was the last game up in Motherwell. Um, mm-hmm. And again, it was just it was nothing. It was a dual like shoulder to shoulder. I felt like I had a cramp and like a sharp pain in my um, in my leg. And um, I thought, I thought, oh, no, I'm not, not coming off here. Do you want know, this pre-season? I'll get through this. I didn't feel like a snap or anything. It didn't feel, it wasn't agony to start with. And then, uh, you know, a few minutes later when Neil Lennon's taken my head off, that I can't I can't run, I thought, <laughs> now's the time to come off. So I come off and then, um, you know, went in the dressing room. The, the doctors come in, looked, you know, it was down towards my ankle. He just said, that's broke. I thought, what do you mean? He just said broke and literally walked out. So my head was, um, you know, where, where it shouldn't be. And then... Uh, you know, travel back to Nottingham, got a scan that night um, in Nottingham Hospital. That was an eventful night. There was a lot going on in the hospital. So um, that was a, an eventful night. But it, it didn't become clear, for, you know, a month after until it was till it was broke, really. So it was a real frustration. It was like a spiral fracture and a chip on the bone. Um, you know, looking back now, you know, I don't wish injury on anyone, but I wish I'd perhaps just, just snapped it in half, like a clean break and just know what I was dealing with and got my head around it. Um, because you know it, it, it was so hard to take because I knew I you know if I started that season I, I was I was in the zone I was buzzing and I knew playing for Forest in front of that crowd week in week out would have taken my game to the next level. I've been watching on from afar as Nottinghamshire's cricketers have made a really decent start to the season at Trent Bridge and it's made me pine for a lovely summer's day at the ground as well. I wanted to remind you that the place to go for all of your tickets is tickets.trentbridge.co.uk. I'll pop a link in the description below so you can go there directly. So whether that's this summer's test between England and the world champions New Zealand, a T20 international against India, the Vitality Blast for Knots, the Trent Rockets may be in the 100, or even a day of relaxing county championship action, or the final of the Royal London One Day Cup. There is plenty to watch this summer. I'd like to thank my friends at Trent Bridge for sponsoring this video, and don't forget to go online to get all your tickets. How much did that, um, I don't know what the word is, but how much did that dominate your Forest career, do you think, the the injury and obviously the the recovery, trying to get back to where you were from that injury. Do you know what, Rob? It absolutely flipped on its head because um, looking back now, you know, and I've got hindsight, I, I was so eager to get fit and so eager to be out there. Um, once the pain had kind of gone in my leg, I thought I was fit. But now, right. you know, as you evolve and you get older and you understand that that's not the case, uh, you know, looking back now, I wish I'd just perhaps put that season to bed. Uh, you know, and just just totally recover. So them, difficult to know, do that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that's what I say to lads I look after now. You know, don't rush yourself. You know, there's certain injuries you can play with and, and get through. We've all had to do it. We've all had to, you know, wrap ourselves up and just get out there at times. And sometimes managers don't give you the option. Um, but I wish I'd just like, it wasn't even listening to my body. It was just like understanding my body and how it works. I've never been injured in my life. So the, the leg break wasn't, you know, the, the be all and end all. It was what it led to, you know, the hamstring injuries, the calf injuries. Um, I, I suffered a lot with my back from there, kind of my alignment throughout my body. And, it, you know, it, it was so hard to, to get my head around. I, I didn't, I couldn't figure out my body from a, from a slight injury, which, you know, hampers your body kind of going up type of thing. Um, you know, I look back now, I was, I was literally slogging my guts. I was at the gym at nine o'clock, like doing sprints, you know, sweating my nuts off, trying to get as fit as I possibly could, where I should have just been like, you know, leave it, leave it. Um, and and do you think all fresh. those those injuries you mentioned, you know, the hamstrings and the back and everything, that was a result of not obviously the broken leg, but maybe pushing yourself too much, or, or how how do you no, look back I, on that? I think I think it I think it was just the adjustment to, to my body because I didn't figure out um, you know how to play week in week out until I more or less went to Exeter, which was you know a fair few years after. And there I was, you know, it was more a case of manager rats me in cotton wool. I could kind of do what I did throughout the week. Um, 
and and just get myself out there for games. And I played, I think, 150 games like week in week out there. Um, so yeah, it was a real frustration. At, and again, at a time where you know, the, I think because the club were doing so well, and I wanted to help Colin. You know, the first year Colin was under a bit of pressure. You know, um, we we didn't start great. And, you know, so we, and Chris was injured as well, actually. So I think between us both, we felt like, you know, the gaff has signed us there. He's put his faith in us. You know, he's, and he's the nicest bloke ever, by the way. He spent a lot of time when he was injured, speaking to us mentally, making sure we settled. Felt like we owed him something and uh, you know, just couldn't get fit, you know. And uh, that season was was more or less written off. I started to do well. I think it was a cruel way I did my, did my hamstring. You know, again, I should have come off and that. I felt a little pain for oh, what's that? But, you know, unless it's like I can't run and I wasn't coming off and then played on for another 10, 15 minutes, I've got 10 centimetre tear in my hamstring. And I've, mm. I've never, I've never had that before. So it just led to the calves and the hamstring. And it was the calves that, that did me. Um, you know, they're, they're not massive ones and fans won't think, oh, you know, he's done his calf, but if you do your calf, you can't run. You just can't put, um, you know, you can't plant your foot and run. So, I, you know, I was doing that twice a season, three times a season. Um, and then it's the point of like, oh shit, that you know, I can feel that coming. You can feel the build up of when it's going to come again. You're not, not that you're not fully committed. That that's that's not the word word at all. But it's more a mental issue. I'm like, I don't want to get injured now. I can't get injured. Can't so you don't injured. sprint at 100 percent presumably because you don't. Yeah, wanna, yeah, You don't want to yeah. do any more damage. Yeah, and you're not thinking. I don't want to sprint, but your mind's just like, you know, be wary of that. Be wary of that. Um, and even when I was ex, my dad used to say like, look, you're not, you're not sprinting. Uh, so you know, I, I know you're better than anyone. You're not sprinting. I'm like, Dad, I know I need to stay in the game now. I need to, you know, keep these contracts yeah. coming in. If I have to play it as harsh as it sounds, like perhaps 95 percent, and play, I will. Um, but yeah, looking back at Forest, it's, it's it was a frustrating time, you know, and um, I was gutted to be honest. That's the main word from it. But at the same time, look, I was lucky enough to to play for Forest. I still live in Nottingham. I grew up, you know. As a young lad watching Forest in the finals and stuff, so it still sends a bit of a shiver down my spine knowing that I played there. Um, you know, I didn't let myself down. Um, it was, you know, it was just, just unfortunate, really. Um, but, you know, I did did everything I could. You know, we went up that year as well. You know, the club were in the and you were on the pitch when they went spent. up. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, I'm glad. You know, I played a part in that. Um, and again, Colin, Colin was great with that. He said, "Look, you know." You played a big part. Don't underestimate what you've done. You know the level of your training. Like you raise the level of your training. You know, there's lads in that team knowing that you're on the tail. They have to perform around the ground. You're absolutely superb on the bus. You're absolutely superb. He so said, "Don't underestimate what you've done." You know, and um, even that when we was out in uh, Marbella, I think when they took us away, and even then, you know, he, he's still giving you kind of confidence. And and I come back pre season absolutely flying and got on the team at the start of the year. At, at Reading, do you know what I mean? I didn't expect that. Um, you know, spent good fees on getting people in. Had a good pre-season again. I thought I did all right in the Reading game. And, you know, perhaps looking back now, I wish I'd said to Colin, like, don't play me in the Morgan game on a Tuesday. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll be fit perhaps the, the week after and, you know, pick up a calf strain, my first calf strain in, the, in that Morgan game. Um, again, which was I was absolutely gutted about because I knew I was um, starting for Wales. I think it was in a national camp coming up that week as well. And, and Tosh had rang me and said, look, you're going to be starting for Wales. So again, yeah. it's um, it's just a frustration um, of picking up. And they, they were kind of niggly injuries, do you know what I mean? Um, six weeks, you know, but then you have to get back fit to where you were and then get back in the team. So that six weeks turns into, you know, a, a longer longer time scale. I was going to ask you a bit more about that, that Yeovil game and that promotion day, because, you know, a lot of Forest fans look back on that so fondly and, you know, the club has achieved great things in its its history in Europe and all sorts of things. But for a certain Forest fan of a certain age, that's kind of the most dramatic, exciting day they've they've had. And you know, hopefully things are, are turning for the better now. But that that Yeovil game itself for you against your former side, for Chris against his his former side, and and to get promotion in that way, how much did that mean to to everybody? And and how dramatic was it? Oh, it was unbelievable because it was. Um... It went down to the wire, and I think about six games before that, we weren't in a good position. I think we were written off, weren't we? Yeah. I think we won six out of our last seven. Um, and again, mentally, I don't know if the but the pressure wasn't off because we knew, you know, individually and collectively, and what the fans expect, what the pressure was. Um, but we just we just kind of, you know, embraced it and went into them final games, and everyone was like, 
like bang on it. But but the Oval game was was phenomenal. Obviously, here the the results was it Doncaster Cheltenham. Doncaster that day Cheltenham, that yeah. Nobody yeah, will ever forget. Remember, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you remember the bits coming in from the crowd, and then Jules starts the game off brilliant, absolutely nails yeah. the goal in the top corner, and you know being from Nottingham and how much he loved the club, I think that would you know that set the tone and. You know, I, I couldn't actually remember the result. Well, I can't remember the result. Now, what was the result that day? 3-2. Yeah. 3 two. Oh, so it was a bit a bit closer than I, than I thought. Yeah. Um, but I just remember, you know, I just I just didn't see nothing bar getting promoted that day. You have to get in that mindset, whatever this takes, whatever we need to do. You know, don't look left, don't look right. Try not to listen to the crowd um, and just get promoted. But, you know, the, the fans after that were like, phenomenal we went to West Bridgeford after that and it, you know there's fully grown men like literally crying and grabbing you and trying to throw you up in the air and see what it means to people locally it, it was like that that was you know I've grown up supporting Cardiff and I've you know, I'm Wales and I've traveled all over watching football but that was you know I'm not very emotional personal but that was it was uh, even speaking about it now it was it was powerful do you know what I mean yeah you know, it was a heck not, of an you know big yeah big you know big strong you know proper men's men just just getting you in headlocks and virtually in tears seeing what what it means to them do you know what I mean and again it was it was a it was nice for us because we, we we knew you know promotion was was a bare minimum for all of us we had a, a group of young hungry you know players that were desperate to get for the championship for ourselves and for the club and we knew if we got there with Forest, you know we could we could achieve something in the championship as well more to come from Aaron Davis in a moment don't forget there are two ways you can support the channel YouTube over the last few weeks has introduced a dollar button where the like button and the comments are uh, down below as well. If you want to individually support me with each video, that would be great. Or you can become a member of Chippers Club. By doing so, you'll get to see videos early. You'll get to see full length videos without adverts. And you get my thanks as well as a member if you're a gold member as well. And my thanks this week go to Ant Adam, Damian Miles, Henny the Hero, Tiny Media, Philip Sheldon, Chris Annabel, Paul Harrison, Christian Tonnies, James Sordon, Thomas Newton, Mark German, Alan Francis, David Shelton, Mark Davis, Ez Chowdhury, Paul Metcalf, Tim Hayward, Richard Waterhouse and Ian Russell. If you want to sign up, I'll put a link in the description below. Let's get back to Aaron Davis. I was going to ask, come on to that in the championship itself. How do you look at that, that kind of half season with Colin before he was sacked and then it obviously it, it just seemed from the outside as though things completely changed for you once once Colin had gone yeah Colin um you know I was gutted for Colin he gave, he gave me the opportunity to sign for such a fantastic club he put his faith in us so I was gutted and, and Colin was a top management top man a uh, good coach you know he never really got too high and he never really got too low he kept us all very grounded and he was a very um uh, not stable stable is not what we're looking but he's very he's just a very steady character um, so I was obviously gutted for him. And then, yeah, after that, you know, although you know, I'll speak glowingly of Billy, I thought Billy was a top manager, but I just couldn't get in his team. Um, you know, I just kept picking up the little niggles. Um, and it just could just, you know, it was a story of my time at Forest. I just couldn't force my way into the team through for injury. And then when I did, you know, I felt like I did all right and just picked up a little niggle off the back of that. Um, so it was frustrating massively. How did the departure come about because you went on if memory serves you went on loan to Brighton to start with yeah so that uh, that was um that was a strange one yeah so Russell um obviously previous manager at Yeovil went to Brighton so oh. um there was a few clubs that wanted to take me that that summer and, and uh, Billy was like no you're not going anywhere you're part of our plans I was like fine you know again I had a good pre-season um he was speaking glowingly of us so you know I think I was scoring a few goals in pre-season and, and performing well so you're not going anywhere and then you know, the last few days of the window, um, you can go to Brighton if you want. So, you know, I was a bit frustrated because he turned down um, permanent moves for me, you know, in, in the same league as well. So it was a bit frustrated, but, you know, I needed to go and play football and, and Brighton gave me the opportunity to go down there. Um, again, kept, kept picking up these little little niggles, um, which I think was stemming from my back. Um, you know, picking up little little hamstrings and playing with like little spasms in my in my hamstrings and calves. And then uh, Russell got, got the sack as well. So um, Gus Boyer came in. It was, it was me and Matt Thorniel, actually. Uh, Slab, we called him, is his nickname. So me and Slab were down there. And, and and Gus, more or less, just come in and said, look, I've got 40 players. No disrespect to you two. I've got to sort this squad out. 
Um, you can either go back to the forest or, or just stay here and train and, you know, be part of what I'm trying to do and force your way in, into my thoughts type of thing. But, you know, Brian was just a bit of a, well, like I said, I think they had 40 pros. So it was with, uh, it Was, was that at the WIV team or if they had not moved by then? No, no, that was at the WIV team, yeah. So, yeah. Um, again, that, that was kind of, manager got sacked. Um, circumstances led one through another and come back and then in the January I could I was allowed to go to, to Yeovil um, Terry Skibbon was the manager at the time just said look come back we'll give you the opportunity to go and play 20 23 games where I was left of the season and go and get your move get get back into the championship we'll just give you the platform to go and play and uh, went down there signed the paperwork went out and trained and come back in and uh, there was a problem with, with me signing um, because I'd obviously played for Forest in the Cup and the terms of my loan to Brighton um, w- weren't worded right. So um, right. I-, I played for three, I-, I couldn't play for three clubs, so I had to sign, uh-huh. re-sign for Brighton on, on £90 a week and go on an emergency loan to, to Yeovil. But Yeovil had seven players on loan, then you can only have five in the match day squad, so that ended up being a- an absolute nightmare. So... Um, yeah, the, the paper. That's weird, isn't it? So you could play because I've always thought the rule was you couldn't play for three clubs in a season. But if you'd sign for, so if you sign for one, you can. If you sign for one of the, yes. the second of the three, you can go and play. I mean, you'd know it better than yeah. me as an so, agent. But so I had to re-sign, yeah, on a permanent, and then go back on, on an emergency. I, I think the loan windows were different then, so don't don't right. don't quote me on that. I think it was different um, back then. Um, but yeah, that ended up being an absolute, um, you know, a stinking time for me, really, where. You know, Billy wished, wished me all, all the best and, and looked after us and just said, look, go, go and get yourself going. And that's literally what it was. Go and get your games and get playing week in, week out, show up when you're fit uh, and enjoy, you know, my football again in an environment, you know, go back to Yeovil. Um, and, you know, it just felt like a, a good place for me to go and, and express myself and move on again. And, uh, you know, it just didn't work out. So, I was, you know, I was in a bit of a scramble come the summer, you know, with, with a turnover of players to get released. I wasn't in a strong position at all. Um, funny enough, Burton Albion wanted to sign me. Um, and I was thinking of that because it was, you know, I was still living in Nottingham at the time. And then uh, everyone was going back for pre season and about three or four days before everyone was going back. I literally had a phone call and um, I reached out to an old manager, Gary Johnson. And he just said, Look, come in, um, see how you get on for, for a week or so and, and we'll have a look at it there. And I did a day's pre season and he said, Look, I want to offer you something. Um, I don't want to miss the boat on this one. You're fit. And um, it took a day or two to iron that contract out and then ended up signing for Peterborough. I was going to come on to your work as a as an agent, and I wonder how much that kind of, once you left Forest, that kind of experience of travelling the country and, you know, trying to sort out moves here, there and everywhere, how much that might have helped you in your current role, you know, understanding footballers and, and their mindsets and, and the difficulties. Yeah, it did. So obviously, I left my agent after after what had went on there, and, and and looked after my own career really in terms of sorting my own contracts. I knew enough people, and new friends. It was literally me ringing ringing managers and ringing people I knew to uh, sorry uh, people I know to to speak to managers, etc. And again, that's you know the business side. I was I was evolving in, although it was the lower leagues. I was evolving in just them conversations and taking ownership myself. Um, but now you know the, the the main thing i've got is i used to play so i know what these players are going through you know nine times out of ten unless it's anything totally um you know um dramatic i you know i'd have probably been through what they've been through and i can understand their mindset so um yeah that's that's what i you know i feel like i'm really helping players with and uh and obviously uh the business side of stuff i can as well and do you deal with mainly younger players in in the lower leagues or your kind of across the board? No, it's varied. Um, so I look after Joe Garner. Joe Garner was my first client. I look right. after guards. So yeah, he's coming to the tail end of his career and I look after lads, you know, really young lads just, you know, just starting out their careers as well. Um, so it's varied, you know, you're not, I'm not working in one single market, you know, working across the board. How is Joe Garner doing these, these days? I suppose it's quite interesting that he obviously, presumably you got on very well as a, uh, when you play yeah. together and he obviously has that trust in you as a mate to to look after his his financial affairs yeah no he did and look i'm very grateful for guns um you know giving me the opportunity to represent him and uh you know we've done very well for him 
So, um, you know, he's helped us, you know, recruit off the back of that. But yeah, Garns was my first um, first player I recruited and signed and got on board. And yeah, we've done well for him. Garns has, uh, well, he's picked up a lot of injuries along the way. But, you know, he's an absolute warrior and he gets thrown out there uh, regardless of whether he's fit, <laughs> fit or, or not anyway. Um, yeah, they, you know, he's done well. You know, he's, you know, since I've known him, his family's grown as well. And, he, you know, he's had a very, very good career. Again, hampered with a few injuries, but his mindset is always to uh, to come back strong. And he's at Fleetwood now, so he's um, he's as close to home as, as he could be. We, you know, we sent him, uh, he went up to Rangers. He's been to... Uh, switch and then he ended up going to Cyprus as well so I think his family are glad we just got him close <laughs> to home and uh, yeah he's been injured uh, he uh, dislocated his shoulder I think for, for the second time in his career and had a problem with his neck this year but he's back at a pivotal time he scored two and two now and hopefully um, he, he can nick another one Saturday and keep Fleetwood in lead one. And just finally um, Aaron to, to kind of wrap things up do you see yourself doing this for for good is this something you you really enjoy doing and uh and would would do it for the rest of of your career. Yeah, no. Look, this this is my you know my my next career. I've been doing it um, five five years now, and I want to do it for you know another another fifteen minimum. Um, I feel like I'm evolving kind of each, each year and 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 learning the job better and getting better at the job and you know kind of getting a good good reputation now. So yeah, it's like your footballing career. You know, you you don't start it and, and dip your toe in. You know, I want to be a, a successful agent. Um, it's very competitive, but you know I'm used to that. I'm used to the mindset of, of competing and, uh, and and wanting to be a winner. And, you know, and you know demand that of my, the players I recruit as well. So now I see it as a you know part two of a, of, of another good career. I had a good footballing career, and uh, I'll, you know I'll make sure I have a good uh, career as an agent as well. Aaron, always good to catch up. Good to have a chat. Thank you so much for your time. Rob, really top appreciate man, it. Mate. Good luck with the um, you know the rest of the season at Forest, mate, and uh, hopefully we'll catch up soon with uh, Forest being in the Premier League. Hope so. Thanks so much. Mm-hmm.